since I gave you a more informative video about Korea. Um, but this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you the top seven apps that I use the most while living in Korea that have kind of made my life here uh, just a little bit smoother. All right, so before I start listing any apps, um, I just want to go ahead and mention that none of these apps are listed by like the most necessary apps or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you the seven apps that I use almost on a daily basis um, just so that you guys can see, but they're not at all by order of like the best app or whatever okay all right so the first app that i have is cacao talk um almost everyone knows about cacao talk i think even people in america know about it but it is basically just a messenger app and it has everything from voice chat or voice call to video calls sending pictures sending videos they have the cutest little emoticons okay and it's all just through data or wi-fi so you don't actually need a phone plan or anything to use it so it's really nice for those who just arrive here you can exchange cacao talk information with people until you get your actual uh, phone plan but to be completely honest i rarely give my phone number out to anyone it's usually hey do you have cacao talk <laughs> and then you just exchange cacao talk screen names or information okay so the next two i'm going to mention are also with cacao company <laughs> i guess cacao company uh, so the first one i'm going to talk about is cacao taxi now cacao taxi i guess is similar to uber i've actually never used uber and there is uber in korea now but i still don't use it i just use cacao taxi cacao taxi is all in korean so that could be a problem for some people but cacao taxi is so nice because when you call a taxi first it'll tell you about how far the taxi is from you but not only that you can watch it on the map so you can see where you are and you can see where your taxi is and watch as it gets closer and closer to you one thing I really like about cacao taxi is that you can send a message to a friend once you ride or get into a taxi and the message will include the taxi's license plate number and your destination and what time you got into the taxi so the friend can kind of like know or like know to be waiting for you to arrive at your destination or your location. Okay, so the next app that I'm gonna talk about that is linked with Kakao Talk is Kakao Bus. Kakao Bus is an awesome app, you guys, but once again, it's only in Korean. I don't know if they plan to change the language to English on these apps or not. Please comment below if you know anything about these apps and the possibility of them changing to English because I don't know anything right now. For the most part with the Kakao Bus app, it's just numbers anyway, so you should be able to understand it a little bit at least. But anyway, so Kakao Bus is so nice because it'll tell you, so if you put in the closest bus stops to say your house, then you can watch as your bus gets closer and closer. So for me, every day before school, I actually have a timer set around eight o'clock, which is where I know that I need to be getting ready to leave the house. So the timer will be set on the Kakao Bus app and it'll like vibrate and show me all the buses that go to my school. So then I'll look at my phone and I'll look at which bus is the closest or which bus I can make. So then I'll just go ahead and watch that until I get ready to leave my house. So how reliable is this app? Honestly, it's not always 100% reliable, but I would say 95% of the time, the app is like right on point, like by the second, you guys. So, but it just depends. Like there's been times where I saw it had eight minutes left. I take the elevator down, start walking, and then it's like suddenly three minutes away. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm starting to run, run to the bus. Go, go, go. You can, you can, you can. <laughs> but like I said, for the most part, it is pretty legit, pretty accurate. So definitely get Kakao Bus if you're not nearby a subway station. Okay, so with these apps, I kept mentioning that it's only in Korean. It's only in Korean. So the next app I'm going to mention is Google Translate. Now, I feel like people are not the biggest fan of Google Translate. I was one of those people, but I was one of those people like four years ago. I think now, Google Translate is really like really really accurate for the most part. Lately I've been using Google Translate a little bit more because I'm taking Korean classes and it's a little bit of a more advanced Korean class than I'm used to so I find myself using Google Translate a lot to figure out what the word is and for the most part I would say 
the words that I've looked up at least 100% of the time, it has been correct. So Google Translate has definitely stepped this game up. So if you didn't like it before, like say a few years ago, try it again and see if you like it now. Okay, so I know you guys are thinking like I've only been talking about transportation apps, transportation apps. Well, that's because I don't have a car in Korea and these transportation apps are life, you guys. These apps are very, very helpful and I'm gonna continue <laughs> with the transportation apps. There's two more that I wanna mention because they're so helpful, I promise you they are. So the next one is CoRail. CoRail is now in English, you guys. So for those of you who are really not that comfortable with Korean, CoRail is in English now. So CoRail is a train application. So it's for you to be able to purchase your train tickets in advance or even to just check the times for a train in advance. So it's so convenient that way. And you could just check them from any city to city so easily. All right, so the next app I'm going to mention, which some people might feel a little iffy about is Google Maps. Now, Google Maps is not 100%, just like I've mentioned with some of the other apps. But for me at least, nine times out of 10, Google Maps has been wonderful for me, um, for me to find a new place that I need to go to. For the most part, it takes me to where I need to go without much issues. And I love how it tells me like exactly what bus number I should take. If I need to transfer, it'll tell me what bus I need to transfer to. Like it's really helpful as far as giving the exact bus numbers or subway, uh, subway lines that'll take you to your destination. All right, so the last transportation app I'm gonna mention is the subway app which is so so useful especially if you are in an area that is that has a lot of subway stations train stations or that has a lot of subway lines like Seoul or Busan Daegu I think they have three now so it's also useful for that too but this subway app is so nice because one it tells you exactly when the train is gonna arrive at your train station now again it is not 100% accurate, okay? So oftentimes you'll go to the train station early because the trains are running a little late. You can also check how much time it'll take to get from your station to the station you're going to and it'll tell you how many stops it'll take to get there as well as how much the fare will cost you. So what I've decided to do is to just go ahead and add three more apps to this video and just make it an even 10, um, just because there are more apps that I do wanna share with you guys. So let's just go ahead and move on to the next one, which is Yogio. Yogio is a food delivery app and it has so many restaurants on there. You just have to like put your location on there and see which uh, restaurants are nearby you that deliver. I personally don't use Yogio that often just because I don't order food that much um, and I don't usually go out to eat unless it's on the weekend or something like that so I haven't used it that often but I have heard good things about it and a lot of my friends do use the app. So the next app that I want to tell you guys about is called Auction. I think with Auction there are a lot of things you can do within the app but the only thing that I use it for is Home Plus Delivery. Yes, you can get your groceries delivered straight to your door. Now the downside to this app is that it is in all Korean, just like I've said about several other apps that I've mentioned in this video. And But this one is a little bit more difficult. Like the other apps, I think you can figure it out on your own how to use it. But this app, I actually needed my aunts to help me set it up because you have to put your banking information in there. You have to put your art card information. So it is a little bit more complex than the other apps that I mentioned. So once you have your account set up, you don't really have to worry about that anymore. Now you just have to learn the basics of how to order your groceries and schedule it to be delivered to you. It's fairly easy from there and then once you do it a few times, it'll become a lot easier. Finally, the last app that I want to mention is an app that you probably already know about and probably have used already, um, but it is called the Airbnb app. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because nine times out of 10, if you're in Korea, you're probably gonna travel throughout Korea or even to other countries. And the Airbnb app is a good app to find good accommodations throughout Korea as well as other countries. The one good thing about the Airbnb app is that it is in English and if the host puts their description of their accommodation all in Korean, you can actually translate it right in the app. All right, so those are all the apps that I want to share with you today. If you have some other apps that you've used while living in Korea that have been very helpful for you and that have helped you to live kind of a more comfortable life here in Korea, please go ahead and comment below and share those apps with the rest of us. 
And as always, thank you so much for watching. You guys take care, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.